Hello again, everyone. It's Bob Martin, the RC sub guy in the background. You can see Jason and Logan working on that Trafalgar that we just uh, took to the pond, getting it prepped up for paint. But uh, today, by popular demand and because we really need to do it, we are going to be focusing on our new 300 series sub driver. Um, what do these things look like and how do you set it up once you have it uh, in front of you? So we're going to be doing a full component install for this boat or for the cylinder so you can see how everything goes together and how it functions when it's all put together. Let's get started. What you see on the screen right now is the package that you get it in the uh, in the mail. This is gonna be how it arrives for you. This is a three inch sub driver, which is why it's called the 300 series. Twin motor options, standard length electronics compartment, eight inch length ballast tank with a three inch diameter. This is configured for the ARC model type seven uh, or any other similar sized boat for that matter. Forward battery compartment uh, of the standard size. Um, just taking a quick look in here, as you can see, we got those twin motors, we got twin output shafts, full size servos with linear uh, conversions on them. Um, and then wired up all in there, we've got twin electronic speed controllers, brushless electronic speed controllers, and um, the servo reverser for the ballast system. That's the ballast servo and then twin air pumps and uh, it's not that they're each doing different job they're rigged up in parallel for increased redundancy uh, and increased flow got our ballast tank on the inside this is the intake for the ballast system this is the gas ballast backup the gas uh, gas backup for the ballast system I should say looking on the inside and I know it's hard to see there's the uh, the actuation linkage for that gas ballast system Got a clear conduit that runs through the center here. This is where you're going to run your power cables and the servo cables for the forward servos, two full-size servos with linear conversions. And then we've got uh, in here, the battery tray has been uh, installed. Other things you get is the equipment tray and that lives uh, inside there. It's just not in there right now. Magnetic connectors for your linkages, power connectors, a fuse in case you're not using like a remote switch or anything like that. We got uh, the main power cables to run down the cylinder. This is a voltage regulator which will come with any cylinders uh, that are running electronic speed controllers that don't have built-in battery eliminator circuits which uh, this particular one does not. Spare seals for end caps and um, the studs. Um, instructions can be downloaded by scanning this QC code, which is on the back of the business card. Then we got two 24 inch servo extensions. Now the things that will not come in your kit that we're going to be talking about today, battery and link monitor, which is a fail safe device. This basically monitors the system and in case of a loss of signal, it will blow ballast. It also monitors the power uh, of your boat and if it drops too low, it'll lock out your ballast system and you won't be able to dive. And then the last thing is the uh, AD2, the pitch controller, automated pitch controller. We're going to show you how to install that too. And I think what I may do actually as well is install a remote on off switch just because I know that's a common upgrade and you're probably going to want to know how to do it. So let's get started. All right, let's get started. Uh, first thing we're going to do, I'm going to get rid of this stand here because we're not going to need it to the end. We're going to open up the cylinder. So we're going to undo these studs. Should come out pretty easily. And this will give you access to the forward battery compartment that just slides right off. So let's take a closer look here. We've got the main tube body right here. This polycarbonate. It's got lots of flex, super strong. Set it to the side. And slip off the battery tray, set it to the side. Now we can pull these studs, set those right here, and this is our forward end cap. This tube uh, is for testing the watertight integrity of your cylinder. So after everything is all put together, you take this cap out, 
And you blow into it and you'll be able to look for bubbles and that's how you pressure test your cylinder um, before you mount it in your boat. Uh, and when I say look for bubbles, obviously you're submerging the cylinder. You're not going to see bubbles in the air. Other side, same thing. Take this comes off, this comes off, and again, taking a closer look, we've got uh, electronic speed controllers in there, a lot of, uh, of wires. You grab my side cutters, we'll open that up so you can see what those cables look like. All right, now we can see things in a little bit of a simpler format. So we've got electronic speed controllers, two of them, one for each motor. You cannot run two motors off of a single brushless speed controller. We got our power buses, our power uh, inputs for each one of the units. And then these are spliced together for a single input from your receiver. So one channel on your receiver controls both speed controllers for both motors and those spin counter clockwise to each other, just like that. So let's set that aside. Now we got our, our ballast <coughs> module here in the middle. Um, again, this is the servo, which in rotary action controls the vent valve right here and the uh, gas vent, which is uh, inside there. There's a Schrader valve, a little arm that pushes. Uh, I'll see if I can put a little picture right here in the video so you guys can see what that looks like. Um, and then in terms of the wiring for that, we'll split this cable, tie, and now we can break this down into the individual components. The 2IS, that's a two amp, switch that controls your air pumps. This little unit right here, this little square unit is a servo reverser because we need to get the direction of that servo going in the right way. Uh, and that's pretty well it. Uh, power connection for the pump that runs to your main 12 volt power or 11.1 volt power for the cylinder. So from here, we need to run some cables. We're going to grab our main power cables. We're going to feed these through this central tube along with these servo extensions. Now you want to make sure that you mount these correctly. Um, your receiver lives in the electronics compartment, which is pump side. So you want the male side, the male side of these servo wires to be on the pump side. So that is how they're going to go in. Let's feed these through that central conduit and take it from there. All right, continuing. So, uh, hey, cables are run uh, through the inside. That was actually super easy. There's not a lot to that. Now we're gonna uh, secure the battery and we're gonna put it in the tray uh, just like this, like a little cup. Now you could try and fit a 3300 in there. It's a little bit tight. Um, I'm gonna use uh, a 1500. You can use two of these in um, parallel, you could put one here and one here, for example, to get three amps if you wanted, but 1500 is plenty for a boat of this size. We're gonna secure that down with some two-sided tape so that nothing moves. So I've got the battery mounted to the battery tray. Now note the orientation here. We've got this notch here that fits into that end cap. The battery goes towards the flush side, but set ahead about three eighths of an inch or even half an inch to allow for the little nubs for the wires for the servos that come out. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna install this remote switch and it's been taken out of the case. It's gonna go just like this. I'm gonna use silicone to adhere this in place permanently. Um, and I'm gonna drill a little hole to get the cables through and we'll continue making our battery assembly. All right, this is <clears throat> what the uh, assembled battery section kind of looks like. We just run the studs in, they're just kind of sitting there. We got the equipment tray sitting on those rails. Um, connectors in for the remote battery, that's black and red, out, white and black. So um, this is the battery connection. It's been run up through that hole and that would connect here, powering up the switch. The switch connects to the power cable running through the cylinder. And then these are the 
two servo cables for the servos themselves. You would slip on your tube here, tuck in the antenna. That blue wire is the antenna for the remote switch. So you just uh, grab these servo cables, connect them here, tuck everything in, put it together, and it's all ready to go, which we're gonna do right now. So it's all nice, tidy, put together. One thing I'm gonna mention now before I forget, when you're building your cylinder, when you're operating your cylinder, when you're maintaining your cylinder, when you're storing your cylinder, always, always, always disconnect the battery from the switch. In order for the switch to operate, it draws just a little bit of current because it's listening. It's listening for signal to tell it to turn on or off. If you leave this plugged in, it'll eventually fully discharge your battery. And uh, that is obviously not a good thing. So when you're not using it, keep it disconnected, but you can keep it connected, you know, for bench testing, for going to and from the pond, whatever you want to, uh, to do with it, just uh, for long-term disconnect that battery. All right, now we are on the other side. This is the, uh, the equipment side, the electronics side. There are a number of units that require main power. We have the 2IS switch right here. That controls your ballast system. I've just ran the cables through this tray and I'm gonna tuck this here. I'm gonna secure it with a dab of silicone and that's gonna keep it permanently in place there. Took the main power cables, I've tucked them down through the tray as well, all right? So looking at the bottom, what do we have? We've got main power and we've got the 2IS power. The other things that we are going to need here are the um, BLM, the battery and link monitor. That needs power, I'm gonna go like that. And this is the BEC, the battery eliminator circuit that's gonna power our receiver. That needs power as well. So what we're gonna do is um, connect all these reds together, all these blacks together with connector. And then on the other side of that is gonna be the power for our e uh, ESCs. And so when we're all done, when we're connecting this together, these just connect. And in theory, everything's got it. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and do this, um, watch your cable lengths. You wanna cut out any excess cable because it just makes it harder and harder to put the cylinder together if you got excess cable. So we're gonna connect these, solder them up, and uh, show you what it looks like when we're done. All right, one point that Jason just brought up. Um, there was a fuse. If you're not using the remote on off switch, you need to install this between the battery and your the rest of your cylinder. This is what's going to blow in case of excessive current in your system. If you have short circuit, it'll protect all of the components of your boat. So this is just wired in series with the positive cable coming from your battery, all right? So not in your battery, but after your battery when it connects to the rest of the cylinder. Now the remote switch that we installed here, the one that I offer here at the dry docks has a built-in 15 amp fuse all right so that is why we did not install a fuse in this unit it's built in to that unit so if you get the remote switch you do not need the standalone fuse all right this mass of spaghetti is the result of us uh, putting all this stuff together so all of those power cables the main power cable the BLM the 2IS and the BEC were all connected together on this side and we use these um these heat shrink tubes and we're really kind of in love with them maybe could you grab a a uh, new one and get them in sets and they come in all different sizes now we put this pigtail on so that when we slip the cylinder on this power cable can go all the way to the front we'll make making it up really easy this is what those connectors look like it's heat shrink and then these blue things melt and seal off the cables on each side and then in the center this uh, solder dissolves flows around the two uh, sets of wires just like that and uh, basically it's uh, an easier way of, uh, of doing a soldered connection where you don't actually need a soldering gun you just need a little little torch a little heat torch so next step um, as I mentioned we're, we, this is where I put the two IS 
and uh, Jason's secured that in place with some silicone. We've got some rubber bands holding that in place while it cures. Um, next step is going to be tidying up the cables and mounting the electronic components on the uh, lower uh, equipment tray there, making everything look neat and tidy. All right, we have everything all wired up and we wanna show you everything in operation. And then we're gonna go through each module individually and tell you how it's wired, what it's connected to, and how they all work together. So looking at things from the back moving forward, we got our switch connected to the main battery. It goes into the switch and out to the module. This goes up to the, to the electronics compartment of the module. Blue wire is simply an antenna. This can be coiled up tucked away neatly inside the cylinder when you're putting it all together. We have our two forward servos connected to these cables that run to the receiver. All right, everything runs through. Power, as we mentioned before, comes in, dives down through the equipment tray, and this is what the lower tray looks like. The BLM the BEC and the 2IS are all connected to that power on this side of the connection. On the other side of the connection, we got pigtails going out to a power connector. That power connector goes to the electronic speed controllers. And the reason we put this in is so that you can actually slip the cylinder on and make up your watertight cylinder. Individual components. Let's start with the uh, the 2IS switch up here. The only thing that that gets plugged into is the um, ballast connector. Now, in this case, there is, it goes from the 2IS into the servo reverser. The servo reverser goes to the ballast. All right, the other connection goes from the switch from the 2IS um, up and into where is my cable here the BLM right so the BLM is in a, a fail safe it needs to be able to control that servo so the goes into the BLM and the BLM goes out to the receiver all right the BEC takes power, main power, and plugs into the receiver. And then the last thing, the pitch controller, the dive plane, the rear dive plane servo gets plugged into that, and then the pitch controller gets plugged into the receiver. So running through all of these channels, and this is just an example, this particular customer is gonna be using his own radio, but your BEC plugs into the power port. These are all shared, by the way, and if you've got extra channels, you could plug that into any open port and it would power everything. Channel one is your rudder servo. That's this right here. Channel two is your forward dive planes. That runs forward into the forward compartment to your forward dive planes. Three is throttle. That goes to your electronic speed controller. Four is a spare channel. That could be torpedo shutters or periscopes or whatever you want. Right now I've got that connected to the other forward servo. Five gets connected to the BLM, which is the fail safe, which controls the air pump and the ballast servo. And then six is the stern plane override, which connects to the AD2, AD2 to the stern plane servo, which is over here. So the cylinder has been completely assembled from an electronic standpoint. Everything should, in theory, be functional, but we're gonna test that right now. In order to do so, um, connections all need to get made up. Battery goes to the switch, switch goes to the cylinder. cylinder uh, the uh, servos get connected in the back here. Um, everything's been connected to our receiver, and now we are going to turn everything on. So transmitter first. Got audio confirmation. The speed controllers have power and signal. And in this case, the uh, receiver is showing visual indication of power as well. Gonna go through channel by channel. Channel one, rudder. 
Channel 2, forward die planes. Channel 3 is our throttle. Note the uh, motor spinning in opposite directions. Channel 4 is a spare channel that you can allocate to torpedo doors or anything that you want to. I got them on channel 4 right now. Channel 5 is the ballast system. You can blow ballast that's sucking air through the hose, blowing it into the ballast tank. Other direction is vent. Vent all the air out and it would submerge. Last one is channel 6, which is our stern plane override. And those are connected through the automatic pitch controller, which automatically controls the pitch of the boat. Everything is working. Now it's time to tidy everything up for one final time, put it all together in the cylinder, do a final test in the tank to make sure it's not leaking. We're gonna be good to go. Well, there you go. Hopefully this video was helpful for you in putting together your new cylinder. As always, if you have any questions, uh, by all means, reach out, bob at nautilusdrydocks.com. I'll try and walk you through things. I'm also gonna throw some additional resources out here for you to take a look at here at the end of the video uh, in terms of diagrams and such. That might be helpful as well. So, hey, with that, uh, on behalf of Bob, Jason, and Logan, the RC sub guy here at the Nautilus Dry Docks wants to say thanks for joining me and we'll catch you next time.